So right off the bat, I wanted to do a video on pretty much how to use infusion pumps and how to titrate these infusion pumps. But then I realized that not a lot of people are actually accustomed to how to calculate and how to arise at those mills per hour that you're going to be entering into the infusion pump. And not a lot of people have an idea basically of how to titrate, especially with inotropes. Not a lot of people have basic ideas on how to do this. So I thought I'd put this video together and I hope you guys really enjoy this. If you haven't subscribed, please hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification icon so you never miss such amazing content every time I post. Grab your piece of paper, grab your pen, and let's go. Hello and welcome to MK's Medical Review Series. My name is Dr. Moses Kazevu. This is the season of my YouTube channel. We look at medical topics in depth. Today we're going to be looking at predominantly titrations. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, what are you waiting for? Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification icon so you never miss on such amazing content every time I post. Now remember that we're going to be using infusion pumps. I'm going to be, this is a whiteboard lecture, so there are no slides. So please make sure you pay attention. We're going to be using these infusions quite often especially in the ICU, in the emergency department. So you need to have, know how to calculate the meals per hour that you're going to be giving it. And it's not just with inotropes, but it's going to be with a various number of fluids. So there are some important formulae that I want you to remember. So one formulae is your infusion rate. So let's say this is going to be in meals per hour. So for you to calculate our infusion rate, which I am going to be calling our IR, your infusion rate, you're going to say the volume of the fluid that you're going to be infusing in this patient. And remember that the volume is going to be given in mils. Then you divide this by the time that you're going to be infusing this. Now, this time here, often if you're calculating it in mils per hour, this should be per hour. If you're calculating it in mils per minute, it should be per minute. Now, this is one formula that I want you to keep in mind. Now, I'll give you a, an example. So let's say you want to replace potassium chloride in a patient. And let's say I've created a solution. Let's say the order that is on the file is that we get, um, let's say, potassium chloride, and we're going to be getting 40 milli equivalents, 40 milli equivalents uh, per liter of potassium chloride. And this 40 milli equivalents of potassium chloride, suppose we add it to about 250 mils. So let's say this is added to about 250 mils of solution, let's say it's added to 250 mils of Ringer's lactate. So now this 250 has to run over some hours. Let's say the order that's there on the file is that this 250 must run over uh, four hours per se. So what is the infusion rate that you're going to enter on the infusion pump? So remember that your mils per hour in this case, so your mils per hour, which is our infusion rate, will be equal to the volume, which is what we're going to infuse. Remember, the total volume that you have is 250 mils. So that's going to be 250 mils. And this 250 mils, remember that we're going to be infusing it over four hours because we're going to be replacing the potassium over four hours. So the time that you're going to take to infuse this is going to be four hours. So now if we get, grab our calculator very quickly and we say our 250 divided by our four hours, it gives us something around 62.5. So it means that if this is running with an infusion pump, you're going to run it at 62.5 mils per hour. And automatically, your infusion pump will tell you that you're going to run this fluid over four hours. And you're going to be able to enter the volume that you want to infuse. And then it will automatically calculate for you the time and the infusion rate. But you will see that you can actually adjust the infusion rate. So this is going to run at 62.5 mils per hour. Very simple to actually do. Now, this is if you have an infusion pump that is available on your ward. Now, suppose you don't have an infusion pump and the nurse is there and they tell you, you leave an order of 62.5 mils per hour. You find probably if there's maybe someone who's newly trained and has no idea on these um, infusion rates and all that, calculating the drops per minute, you'll find out that they have given the potassium very quickly. Your patient tends to die from arrhythmias. So you should be able to leave orders that people can follow. 
So now, this is the equation number one that I want you to keep in mind. This one is very simple. If you have an infusion pump, you just simply calculate the volume divided by the time in hours and you enter the meals per hour. If your infusion pump is meals per minute, but most infusion pumps are going to be meals per hour, the ones that we have in our setting here. So you're going to keep it at uh, your 62.5 mils per hour. Now, if we're using this same example, and let's say that now instead of you having the infusion pump, you now have a giving set. You just now have just the infusion, the, the normal, you have the Ringer's lactate, you have the potassium chloride, but there's no infusion pump. You have a giving set, but you have no infusion pump. And the nurse asks you, how much must I give? How slow or how fast must this infusion rate actually run? So this is where the second calculation or the second equation actually comes in. Now, this is what you you're going to be calculating your drops per minute, which I'm going to be abbreviating as DPM, drops per minute. Uh, so like that, drops per minute. How many drops in one minute must the nurse count such that this IV infusion is going to finish in the next four hours? Now, to calculate this, you're going to say the volume to be infused, so VTBI, the volume to be infused. This volume to be infused should be in mils, and then the time that it takes or the time that you want this infusion to run by, this now should be in minutes. So this should be in minutes because remember your drops per minute is going to be in minutes. So this as well should be in minutes multiplied by what we call the drop factor. So multiplied by what we call the drop factor. Now this drop factor is a constant and it depends on the giving sets that you have. So if you have certain giving sets, there are some giving sets that will give you 15 drops 15 drops per mil. So 15 drops per mil. So it means uh, about count 15 drops to make one mil. And there are others that will have 60 drops. We call this as micro uh, drip. And then these are referred to as, I mean, the 60 are called micro drips. And then these ones are referred to as macro. Most of the times, you know, the giving sets will have this 15 drops. So you have to make sure that you check what you have in terms of the giving sets. So if we use the same example that we are, um, having here of a patient that is meant to receive 250 mils of Ringer's lactate, which contains the 40 mil equivalents, and you want to give it over four hours, but you don't have an infusion pump, this is how you simply do it. So you're going to say the volume to be infused, which is 250, that's already in mils, so that's 250 mils over there. So we have our 250 mils. Then this is going to be divided now by the time, but remember the time is now going to be in uh, minutes. So remember that there are 60... Um, minutes in an hour, so you multiply four by 60. And this is going to be multiplying the drip, uh, the drip factor, the drop factor, which is in this case is 15, because that's our standard of what we have on the wards. If it's in the pediatrics wards, this would be 60 instead. But you make sure that you check whatever is there. So if you do the math for this, four, your, our four multiplied by 60, that gives us 240. So this, in essence, is going to be 250 divided by 240, multiplied by 15. Then uh, when we calculate our 250 divided by your 240, it's going to be giving us about 1.041. Then if we multiply that by 15, this gives us roughly about 15.625 drops per minute. But then now you can't count 6.25 drops Per minute. So you, the order that you would give is approximately this patient must receive about 15 drops per minute. So the, the nurse is now going to count how many drops per minute this infusion should be running at. So in one minute, you should count about 15 drops. So it means that in half the time, in 30 seconds, you should give about seven drops, six to seven drops. So if you have about roughly six to seven drops in about 30 seconds, then that's a good aim and you, you're going to be allowing it to run at this 15 drops per minute. That is in the case of potassium chloride. And remember that when you're infusing potassium chloride, you want to use a bigger vein. And obviously, if you have a central line, that's even better because it can cause irritation to the vessels. So these are the two main formulae that I want you to remember and I want you to keep in mind. If you haven't written them down, please write them down. But now you can get a screenshot of this and save it somewhere because I'm now going to talk about the infusions in terms of the inotropes. So I will erase this now, okay? Right, now, in terms of the inotropes, I'll give you one formula that I want you to keep in mind. So the formula is as follows. 
So to find your meals per hour for your infusion of your inotropes, what you're simply going to do is that you're going to calculate your weight of the patient. And the weight of the patient here should be in 60, I mean, it should be in kilograms, not 60. I'm thinking of an example. So this should be in kilograms multiplied by 60, which is one hour because you're running it per hour, multiplied by the dose of the inotrope that you're giving. And remember, the dose is going to be in micrograms per kg per minute. And all this is going to be divided by the concentration of your fluid. I'll explain what this concentration of the fluid, and this should be in micrograms per mil, the concentration of your fluid. So this is one formula to keep in mind. If you have an infusion pump, you can just simply plug in the weight, multiplied by the 60, multiplied by the dose of the inotrope, multiplied by the concentration. Now, what do I mean by concentration? Remember that you're not going to be giving your inotropic and vasopressors as boluses. You're going to be putting them in fluid so that they can run over some time. So suppose you leave an order and you say, get nine milligrams of adrenaline. So let's say we say get nine milligrams of adrenaline and we add it to 500 mils of, let's say, normal saline over there. So we have nine milligrams, so that's about nine ampules. If you have your one mil, so your one mil is equals to one milligram. So if you get nine ampules of those and you add them to um, about 401 mils of saline, then the total volume that you have is 500 mils. So the 500 mils is going to contain nine milligrams. But remember, this is in milligrams and we want to change it to micrograms because our calculation here is in micrograms. So our nine multiply that by a thousand to change it in micrograms. This will be what you find in 500 mils of our normal saline. So this is going to give you 9,000 like that. And this 9,000 will be contained in 500 mils of normal saline. So it means our concentration in microgram per mil, we divide this both sides by 500. We divide this side by 500. And so your 500 cancels this 500, these zeros cancels these zeros, and then your 90 divided by your 5 is going to be equal to 18. So this will be equal to 18 milligrams per mil. This will be, or micrograms, this is not milligrams anymore, this is micrograms. So this should be your ultimate concentration. This is the concentration. Suppose now you give orders or you leave orders on your ward. This should be the concentration. And make sure that your concentration actually doesn't exceed 18 micrograms. If you have a central line, you can give a bit higher doses, but 18 usually, because I know that you're going to be stuck on wards where you don't have central lines. So actually make sure that you make this combination, which is resulting in 18 micrograms per mil. So this is the order that I want you to keep in mind. So for adrenaline, you're going to be getting nine milligrams of adrenaline. You add it to 500 mils of saline. Then of course, your final concentration will come up to 18 micrograms per mil. Now let's give a practical example. Remember that your dose of adrenaline is running from 0.05 to about one microgram uh, per kg per minute. The others will actually reach two, but I don't reach that far. By the time you're reaching towards maybe 0 0.8 and your patient is not improving, then you have to look for another alternative cause of why their BPs are low or possibly start thinking of adding a second inotrope. So the same example that I was about to give you, a 60 kg man comes in and they're in septic shock, you have bolus them with fluid, and then you want to actually start them on an inotropic support. You want to start them on a vasopressor, in this case, epinephrine. So you, you, you have told the sister to make 9 milligrams of adrenaline added to 500 mils of saline. Remember, you don't add it to 500 mils. You instead remove 500 mils of saline, then you add the replace with adrenaline to make sure that the total volume comes up to 500 mils. So it means the concentration that you have made is 18 micrograms per mil. So this man is weighing 60 kg multiplied by the time, which is 60, multiplied by the dose. In this case, our dose, I'm going to start off at 0 0.1. So our dose is 0 0.1 micrograms per kg per um, minute. Then this divided by the concentration that we have made, which is 18. So when we multiply now our 60 uh, multiplied by 60, that gives us your uh, 3,600. You multiply that by 0 0.1 that should give you about 360, then that divided by 18, which gives us 20. So it means that the order that you're going to leave is that 
the order that you're going to leave the nurse is that get nine milligrams of adrenaline, you add it to 500 mils or rather 401 mils of saline to make sure that the total volume comes up to 500 mils, then you let it run at 20 mils per hour if you have an infusion pump. But if you remember very well our previous video, or rather our previous um, illustration of the two equations that I had, well, we don't have an infusion pump, but we just have a giving set and we want to calculate the drops. Remember, in this case, you're giving 20 mils and then this 20 mils should be given in one hour. So you divide that by 60 and then multiply it by our drop factor, which is 15. So if you calculate that, it's going to be 20 divided by 60. So that gives us 0 0.3333 multiplied by 15. So that gives us about 4.99999. So you can actually say that start this off at five drops. Per minute. So the order that you you give or the order that you leave is that you're going to get nine milligrams of adrenaline added in or rather present in 500 mils of cell line to run at five drops per minute. And of course, you're going to be titrating accordingly. It's the same calculation in terms of dobutamine. The only thing that is different is, of course, the concentration of fluid that you're going to be using. Often we say 250 um, milligrams and about 200 mils of solution for both dobutamine and dopamine. While it's with epinephrine, you can go 9 milligrams and 500 mils of saline. And then, of course, the dose also differs for dobutamine and dopamine. We start off at 5 micrograms per kg per minute. We can increase up to 20 micrograms per kg uh, per minute. I really hope you enjoyed this video and it was a brief summary. I've done an in-depth video concerning these inotropes and how to titrate them. I'll leave it tagged in the description below and also as a pinned comment. If you enjoyed such content and you want more such content, please drop a like, drop a comment to show some support to Zambia and beyond. My name is Dr. Moses Kazevu. Until next time, bye-bye.